Hi guys, my name is Jamin, and today we're going to be talking about induction in three unit math exams. Now, induction is something that a lot of students have a lot of trouble with, but unfortunately, it's also something that appears in pretty much every Extension 1 math exam. It'll always be there. It's only ever one question, but it always is one question. So you need to know how to do them. And it's always going to be one of three styles of questions. So it's either going to be an equality proof. These are sort of the standard ones that are, are they, I suppose, the easiest. Then you've got division proofs and inequality proofs. And they're normally a tiny little bit harder. In the video today, I'm going to be focusing on equality proofs and inequality proofs because they've tended to be more common in HSC exams up to this point. Whatever sort of induction proof you're doing, you need to remember the four steps. The first is always to prove for n equals 1, or otherwise, whatever the lowest case is. For example, if you're asked to prove for all integers greater than or equal to 3, you would test n equals 3. Whatever the lowest is, you start by proving the result is true for that, and you just do that by substitution. Step 2, assume the result is true for n equals k. So k is just an unknown integer that falls in the domain you're asked to prove for. So again, if we were asked to prove for n greater than or equal to 3, then k would be an integer greater than or equal to 3. We then use this assumption to prove the result is true for n equals k plus 1, and this always involves substituting the assumption in some way. If we've proved the result is true for n equals k plus 1, on the assumption that n equals k is true, then that is enough to prove the result true by induction. And you always want to conclude with some statement like that. And my default is always, since the result is true for n equals 1 and n equals k plus 1, then it is true for, and then you just give a few examples of numbers that it's true for to sort of show how the chain works. Now importantly, in suggested solutions for three unit exams, you can just say proof by induction. That's absolutely fine. It's up to you whether you want to write the longer version as a sort of more definitive way to say it for yourself, but in exam style scenarios, then by induction is perfectly fine. As long as you know what it means, then just writing it is absolutely fine. Okay, so let's start with a question from last year's HSC. Now this question has a lead in where we're asked to prove a result that we'll then use in the induction proof itself. The proof itself is that we're asked to prove that essentially the product increasing of odd integers is equal to this expression here. So this result here is going to play into this in some way, but we'll see that when we get to it. Let's start with part A and let's prove that result. So there's a few ways to actually do this proof. The easiest is probably to say that these brackets are the right hand side. To do a very quick expansion, so if we're really quick, 4n cubed plus 14n squared plus 9n from the n, and then the 1 gives us 4n squared plus 14n plus 9. And if we group those terms, we do indeed get what we have in the, prob in the problem. So that is equal to the left-hand side, and that's enough. This is only worth a mark. You don't want to spend too much time on it, so you quickly get that out of the way. We can now use this result anywhere we see fit in the induction proof itself. Right, let's get into the induction proof itself, and let's use the steps we defined earlier. The first step is to prove the result is true for our lowest value. Because we're proving true for n greater than or equal to 1, that is our lowest value. So, when n equals 1, that implies the left-hand side is equal to just, well, we substitute n equals 1 into here, into those two spots, and it's just 1 times 3, which is 3. The right-hand side will pop n equals 1 into there. And that also gives you 3. So, therefore, the result is true for n equals 1. So that's the first step. The next step is to assume the result is true for n equals k. So all you do is you would just write that. Assume true for n equals k. 
And what you'll do is you'll write the result out. And instead of n, you'll put k. And this is just representing that k is a value that's general. As long as it's bigger than or equal to 1, you're assuming that it's true for whatever value k happens to be. So we've written that result out. Step three is to check the result is true for n equals k plus 1. So we'll write the result out, and it's going to look much the same. But because our number is 1 higher, at the end we're not going to stop substituting at k. We're going to stop substituting 1 above that. So it's actually going to look like this. So these are the brackets. What I'm doing here are these brackets here. But instead of just k, I've got k plus 1 in there. So it looks like this. Right, so that's the left-hand side. Now, what we notice is that most of this we've seen before, this bit in the green bracket there, right? It's just these two brackets at the end that are new. So, these brackets at the start under the green bracket, we can replace that with our induction assumption. So we'll go ahead and do that. This is always what we're looking to do, to bring in that assumption that we made. And then we still have these brackets added at the end. I'm going to expand them. So we'll have 2k plus 2 minus 1, which gives us 2k plus 1. And the next one, similarly, will be 2k plus 3. So from there, I'm going to do two things. First thing I'm going to do is bring the first k into this first bracket. So we'll get 4k cubed plus 6k squared minus k. And I'm also going to expand this second bracket, and that gives us 4k squared plus 6k plus 2k, which is plus 8k plus 3. Now what I want to do is bring these two brackets together. Now, I don't really want to have to deal with this one third, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this bracket here by 3, and then I can bring them inside here and it being next to the third will cancel out with that three I've added. So see if you can follow along. What I'm going to do is add this in here, like this. So I'll just have plus 12k squared plus 24k plus 9. I've added these numbers in multiplied by a power of three so that it cancels off the third that I've added them into. And we tidy that up, and we get one third 4k cubed plus 18k squared plus 23k plus 9. Now this is really promising because that matches the result we had earlier. So let's go to the next slide and finish off this proof. So our left hand side is at this stage, and we recall from the first part of the question that we can replace this with an expression one third k plus 1, then 4k squared plus 14k plus 9. Now this is actually the end of the proof, although it may not look like it. If we take this side here and we substitute n equals k plus 1, what we get is this. We get 1 third k plus 1, then we have 4 k plus 1 squared plus 6 k plus 1 minus 1. And if we expand that out, we actually get 4k squared plus 14k plus 9. So in fact, this is the result we need to prove the result is true for n equals k plus 1. We're there. In an exam, you might want to set that up by saying, OK, well, the right-hand side should be equal to this. And that, therefore, 
left-hand side is equal to right-hand side, and that's the proof. Or you may wish to do this blue bit first. It's really up to you. As long as it's sort of clear what you've done, don't do what I've done and use arrows in the actual exam. That's not a good thing. And step four is always just to conclude. And again, in exam scenarios, totally fine to just say, therefore, the result is true for any for n greater than or equal to 1 by induction. It's really important that you put this concluding thing at the end there. It doesn't have to be super elaborate, like I've explained, but it needs to be there. You won't get full marks without it. So let's move now to a slightly more complicated example, this time an inequality induction proof. But it's structured the same way. We're still given a result to prove as a lead-in, and that will ultimately play into the induction proof itself in part B. So this lead-in is fairly kind, and there's a few ways to do it. The way I'm going to approach it is I'm going to put everything over a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is adjust every fraction. The first one, I'll multiply the top and bottom by k. The next one, I'll multiply the top and bottom by k plus 1 squared. And the third one, I'll multiply the top and bottom by k, k plus 1. This effectively introduces a common denominator for every fraction. That allows us to put the whole thing over k, k plus 1 squared. And on the top, I'm just going to write this out in expanded form. In the middle here, what I'm writing right now, make sure you include a negative on every term. So those terms there have come from that term there, there's a negative in front of all of them. So make sure you include that. The next one just has a plus and is a bit easier to understand. And when we do that, the k squareds will cancel and everything else will tidy up as well. And what we'll be left with is just negative one on k, k plus one squared. And that's definitely less than zero. The reason why is that it's guaranteed to be a negative on top, k plus 1 squared is guaranteed to be positive, and k is also guaranteed to be positive. That's given in the question. So we just say, right, that's less than 0 since k is greater than 0. That's the lead into the question. Now let's get into the induction proof itself. So again, we'll follow our four steps. The first step, Substitute the lowest value, check that it works. For us, this is 2, because we're asked to prove it for all integers greater than or equal to 2. So we substitute 2, and we'll get 1 on 1 squared plus 1 on 2 squared is less than 2 minus 1 half. And we evaluate all that. We get 5 on 4 less than 3 on 2, and that's true. So therefore, the result is true for n equals 2. From there, we go to step 2, and we go, OK, let's assume it's true for n equals k. And that will just look like substituting it in. Nothing crazy. And in step 3, we check for n equals k plus 1. And again, just like before, it'll look very much the same. Except we won't stop at k this time. We'll go to k plus 1. Now from here, what we're looking to do is to bring in our induction assumption. And again, we've got something that's close. This first piece matches exactly to what we had in our assumption. The only extra bit is this 1 on k plus 1 squared. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll add a plus 1 on k plus 1 squared to both sides of our assumption. And then it matches exactly. And what that lets you do is then say, well, I've got this thing here when I substitute n equals k plus 1 
And using our assumption with the modifications in blue, we can say that that is less than 2 minus 1 on k plus 1 on k plus 1 squared. Yeah, so now we've introduced the inequality that we need. Now it's just about tidying this up to make it match the actual expression that we want. So this is where we're at. Again, all we've done is we've used our modified assumption. We know that this bit in green was less than this bit in green. And adding this piece here in yellow to both sides of that assumption doesn't change the inequality. So that's where we're at. We've reached this stage. Now this right-hand side, this negative 1 on k plus 1 on k plus 1 squared, that's something we've seen before. In red, I've just inserted the result we proved right at the start of this problem. And what you'll notice is that there's crossover. This 1 on k plus 1 squared minus 1 on k, that's what we have here. And we know that that plus 1 on k plus 1 is less than 0. Or in other words, that 1 on k plus 1 squared minus 1 on k is less than minus 1 on k plus 1, if we do just a little bit of rearranging. That's what we're going to use. Because if we want this left-hand side to be less than this, well, we can definitely make this substitution here from our red result, because that's only going to make this bigger. So it's definitely allowed. So all we'll do is instead of writing this bit at the back, we'll just write minus 1 on k plus 1. So that's where we're at. And that's the result. That matches exactly with the expression in the induction proof we needed. So that's the end. We finish with step 4. Therefore, the result is true for n greater than or equal to 2 by induction. The tricky thing with these induction proofs, I suppose, especially for inequalities, is keeping track of what's bigger than what. So again, in this example, what we've done is this needs to be smaller than this. Right? That's what we've proved. That's smaller than this. By substituting this bit in red, we know that 1 on k plus 1 squared minus 1 on k is less than negative 1 on k plus 1. So making the substitution from there to there is just making that right-hand side bigger. So it doesn't break the inequality at all. It's, in fact, making it more pronounced. We've made it bigger, not smaller. That's something you might have to think about for a little bit. These sort of questions definitely threw me when I was doing my HSC. If you have any questions about this, be sure to jump onto our three-unit math forums. There'll be a link at the end of the video. You can come and ask me to explain this again, or perhaps give it to you with another example, but this is something that it's really important to have your head wrapped around.